Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Kim with Bluebird Legacy. Today I'm going to show you what I've done with some eco prints and I just took these out. I don't have the video set up to show you the whole setup, but I'm going to talk to you about it and we'll look at this one. I just poured the water off from these and I decided just to turn on the camera and bring it in and set it up. I really like how this came out. There's a leaf here, a leaf here, here and here. When they're dry, I have some that are dry that I'll show you in this video if it doesn't get too long. But the paper is super yellow. I don't know if it's coming on the screen like that, but the water was really yellow and there's a lot of yellowing to it here, more so than I've ever had. So it must be some of the plant materials that I had in here. Let me just set this over on a piece of plastic that I have. And then these are the leaves. And I, oh, these are um, not a, let's see, it's a dogwood or a redbud in my backyard these are from. And see, I notice when, when the stem, the portion where the stem and the veins go down, when that is against this, the paper, it picks up much better. But if it's not, you just get an outline of the leaf. Yeah, this is a, um, I can't remember if it's a dogwood or red bud. I always get them mixed up, but it's a blooming. Now see that, this did nothing on this side, but the mirrored side it did. This one's interesting. So what I did is I take alum, just alum that I bought at the grocery store. I fill my mason jar up to three fourths right here. This is one pint to this level and it's three fourths here. So I filled it up three fourths. I put two tablespoons in the jar and mix it really well. Then I take this brush. It's a real soft brush. Um, I don't know if it's called a haiku brush or sort of like it's on the on the same line as an oriental made brush, but I don't think this is necessary. Oh, it's just a Langnickel, made by Langnickel. It's a one inch. Anyways, I use it for encaustic and then I use it putting the alum water. I, I soak down each page. I soak down each page with the alum water and then I lay the plant material out and each page back and front I soak down and then I just pour all the alum water into the into this dollar store. It's it is doubled. Because you'll see on some of the prints that I show you that are dry, I the first time I did it on the stove and um it burned through. <laughs> I mean it didn't catch on fire, but it just the pages are burnt. So this is the one that worked on the other. Yeah, it's really light, but I like it. I'm not sure what that plant is. I went on a, oh, I'm so sorry. My setup is in my studio next to my table and I should have got a gooseneck, but I just got a tripod that's really tall. And so anyways, to get the right angle. So, This is an outline of one in here. And we'll see them, you could see more when it dries. But that's not, well maybe that is plant material. Let's see. Yeah, it's coming off some. Let me get some water. A little water. Oh yeah, just had a little residue on there. But they'll dry and then what I do is flatten. Flatten them in, be in a large atlas that I have. Just put the pages between that. Oh, this is interesting. 
This was a little purple plant. What happens is usually the color of the plant that it, you see never doesn't come out that color when it when you eco dye. That's what I've found. There's been one plant that did, and it's I'll show you. It's a real beautiful blue color for tiny wildflowers. So here, I think this is the red bud also. And then these are just weeds that I got on my trail run. Now I put, when I, when I add the water, I boil water, and then I add it after I sit this into my oven. And I have my oven at 475, and then I fill it from my tea kettle, and I boil water, and then fill it with boiling water. It does take a bit for it to come up and boil, and then I boil it about at least 35 minutes. I have done it about 45 minutes, but I think... What I found is it's overkill. It sort of uh, disintegrates everything, and I didn't get the good prints. Personally, my my thoughts, and this is just my thoughts, I'm no expert on this, I just like to experiment and have fun with it. Uh, my thoughts are that the alum, the better the alum water is and the more soaking into the plant material and on your paper, it's what releases the tannins in the, um, see that's another piece of that. So make sure that you put plenty of alum in before. Now here's the mirror off from those and look what a beautiful golden color. Wow, that's a beautiful color. It's different, I haven't had that color before. And the type paper that I used was, um, I used Bristol. I used some drawing paper. It was a 98 pound, just in a uh, tablet. And then I've used some, a couple of pieces of watercolor paper. And then a piece of mixed media. Because I like to see what different paper does. I tried it on some music print just to see what over dyeing would do and it it didn't turn out the way that I thought was good so I, I didn't put any more of that in here. We have some. I did put a fern. The last time I I put a fern in, it did nothing. Let's see what this one does. Well, it's consistent. Nothing. <laughs> a little, but there's really must not be very much tannin in that. It just doesn't release its, um, its color. I love ferns, though. They're one of my favorite plants. Okay. Some of this material off. That's a beautiful yellow. I think this whole, uh, that's why the water was yellow when I poured it out. It was really a strong color. This was a little group of wildflowers. And I wanted to do it on ledger paper just to see what would happen. And it, it actually took the dye well, just like the others. Let's see. And it took part of the maple leaf, too. On the other side, that's the maple leaf. So that's good. That paper, the ledger paper, is vintage paper. So it will be, I'll have to be careful when it's, when I move it until it dries. But the other papers I find, the Bristol or mixed media or watercolor, it does not, there's no problem with moving it when it's wet. 
it's not really, um, you know, real fragile. It picks up like, like regular copy paper. If you have it touching one, when I do coffee dyeing, if it's touching the other, when it's wet, it'll just rip right apart. So this is part of the back. I think the back did better than the front on this. I like the, the effect that you can sort of see through the paper. This is either the mixed media or the other. Boy, that side turned out nice. Some people put uh, rusted items. Let's see, that's these two leaves. I don't know what this plant is. I just sort of picked it up as I was leaving. I thought I'd want more leaves. And uh, it, it did put a color out. It's beautiful. All colors. See, it's better on this side where the veins are. That's where the veins are. And it always puts a better cast, I guess, from the weight. What I do is I put, once I get the water in there, I have two big, I have one brick and a huge rock <laughs> that covers the whole side that I put on. And then I cover it with a, a huge cookie sheet. So it will boil quicker. But I don't do mine in, on the stove. As I said, I, I put this in the oven. That's what this did. These are the plants. So this little wildflower is there. That one did nice. And then this one put an imprint on both, dyed both pages. That's beautiful. My next adventure is I would love to get these prints on fabric. It's it's all about the logistics of getting the fabric in the water and the and that you gotta have the right. Oh, there's the maple leaf. That's about the only one that came on that one. This one did nothing. Gave some black on it. Interesting. Pick it up with that. Ooh. I like that one. That's what that did. Two of the maple leaves. Not very nice. I wanted to do this today because I thought, oh, it's going to be cold and the leaves are going to fall. Of course, it was about 65 degrees today. So it was a nice day to go out for a walk anyways. That, oh, that did make an imprint there. And these are the bigger papers. They just barely fit in this. Oh, that's beautiful. See this side. Huh. Oh, the maple leaf has gone through the paper. Just a barely an outline of that. Oh, 
this is raspberry and I've, I've heard that raspberry makes really good plant to eco dye and I think that's what we're going to see. Blackberry, raspberry, wild, wild blackberry is what I meant to say, not raspberry. <laughs> Although those are good berries, but this is a wild blackberry. Lovely. Let's see if I can pick this up. Oh, you see that well? Oh my, I have to show you the other side. So there's that, the ras wild blackberry, and then this is the plant that's underneath. Seems quite magical, although there's no magic to it. It's just science. The alum releases the tannins in the plants and then they, and then the vinegar. Did I forget to tell you about vinegar? Well, I was out of white vinegar. Normally you use white vinegar, a quarter cup in your in your pan. Um, but I just used Bragg's apple cider vinegar and uh, it worked fine, as you can see. These are here, some of the plant came off. That's a really good plant. That was another one that I just picked up, not knowing if it would work, but that really turned out nicely. So, and you can see where the last time I, when I put it on the stove top, it burned. Uh, the stove burner burned a little hole. I'm gonna dry my hands off. So, I think we've got a few minutes. We can, we can go ahead, let me just sit this over here and we will go ahead and I can show you, oops, oh jeez, sorry about the bump. Hope you're not dizzy. The tripod is right near my, my leg. Um, so, these are the first set that I ever did. Guess what? I watched a YouTube video and I went and followed what they said and um, then I tweaked my own little thing when I did it. Um, and so I saw what plants do well. This is roses. This is my rose bush and this is the um, red bud leaves. But a rose is a really beautiful and then that's the back side. And I love, this is the actual, there was a flower on that. If you look at it this way, this is a bud and this is an actual flower sort of flattened down and these are the leaves. They're actually one of my, close to one of my favorites. So there is that. And then this one is really amazing, I think, in that these are the leaves. They were turned, the veins weren't down. And then this is a stem and a stem going up to a rose that I put in there and it had a little bud over here. So it's it's really your own imagination. Um, and then I like the color of this too. It's just real earthy. Um, it's your own imagination what you want to do with it. What plants are around your place so it's always going to... And it's so heavy that this makes an indentation. The stem makes an indentation in the paper. And these are, um, I think these are watercolor papers. More, these are just petals to the rose. You see that makes, it was a, it's a bright pink rose and it makes like a bluish color. This is an interesting spot right here and I'm not certain what that was, but here's rose leaves. 
So I think the the sum of all of them really is what makes it. I'm gonna make a journal. And then here's another flower, the rose, and then random. Oh, I threw this paper in there. This is a flower I opened up. So hope you're getting it in there. A f one of the flowers that I opened up. And this is the center of the flower in each petal. Then um, I had done some screen printing stuff on here before and I threw, I wanted to use this paper because the other side was blank. But this is my lemongrass. This is the color lemongrass turns when you eco dye. So, another flower, or the opposite mirror side. This is the mirror image of that um, rose and then the mirror image of the lemongrass. And there's, I guess, the mirror image of the rose that is the rose on the stem. I did a lot of those earlier because it's right outside my my yard. <laughs> but I found I really liked them. Such a brown color these turned. And I think, I really think that's part of what colors you get is how much alum and the type of the type of vinegar you put. The vinegar is what sets or is like a, I don't want to say more than, I'm not, I don't want to say the wrong word anyways, but it's, it sets the um, eco dyeing makes it stay in the paper. Like I said, I'm not a professional on this. I'm a professional at other things. Um, but this is fun. This is so cool. Seeing how leaves, you know, like, the leaf imprint is on there. I've got to do this on fabric because it would be such an awesome quilt or like a t-shirt would be so cool or just a dress, like a long summer dress with all these prints on it. It'd be really cool. So here's more of the rose. I thought I had more different leaves. I think they turned, this is the yellow and the blue, more leaves. And then here's another flower that I opened up. That's the center. Oh, this is really faint. I don't know if you can see it, but this was some rosemary. I have herbs. This was like rosemary here. Oh, this was the best one that I liked. It was a little blue plant that I got. Um, and it's it was a um, wildflower. And it had little dots of blue, like a turquoise almost. And it came out like this. And this was a lot of them. <laughs> it came out like this. And then we have the mirrored side. I like the branches. I could see almost taking that and drawing a tree, making a tree out of that. Oh, this was the one, the plant. I hope you can see the blue color. Thought it was really pretty. And then the mirror image of that blue, which I think I like this one better. There's a little of the burnt. This was one on the bottom. They're out of order now. This must have been the top one because there's nothing here. And a little bit of peachy orange in there. It's fun. You should try it. You know, the, the alum is only a couple dollars, and you can do several. I've done this couple, three times now, and I still have the little jar of alum. More of the, maybe this is rosemary. More of that. This is lemongrass. And then this is just um, much thinner paper. One of my, uh, it's my granddaughter's um, paper that I got, a notepad, and I wanted to try different papers. And it's a, it's like called a marker paper, just from Target or something. And um, it, it came out well. I was afraid it would be too thin. It's a rose. It's 
kind of nice to have thinner papers too to do things with. There's the mirror of that one. And this is where I was talking about it burnt through. Uh, it got so hot, you know, everything was on top and the rocks were, it got so real hot there. But I just saved it for an example to see. Had some blue there and some of that. Oh, and I also dripped some um, wa liquid watercolors, liquid watercolors on here. I just wanted to see what it would do. Obviously, it did nothing. So, and then this was the music paper. Nothing on this side, and it really didn't even make any exceptional mark. So, I didn't do that. And then this is the ledger I did last time. It just didn't get... And see, this was all done on the stovetop. I, I find that I like... There's one mark. I like... Yeah, and I tried a dictionary page, too. I can use this for collage. But, you know, I like doing them in the oven as opposed to doing it on the stove. And I like to try different... Um, different techniques and see how they turn out. And then I try to keep track of which plants, you know, do better and how, how well they, how, how much alum I put in and how well they do. Like today I put more alum, I coated the papers and it seemed to really get a good, good print. That's the only paper out of any of them that ripped, so that's not a problem. But I appreciate you stopping by, and um, I hope you like the video, and I really wish that you would uh, give me a thumbs up and um, and subscribe. You know, I'm going to have lots of other videos out. There's, there's just so many. If you look at my um, different ideas that I've placed on there, I'm going to um, be doing a lot of different things. Let's. These are the leaves that I used, and these two got left out for whatever reason. But those those were used, and then I also today picked up. I've got some of my um, um, this pink cone flower. You probably have these, maybe if you put some. Um, perennials out and I got some sticks because I'm going to be making some tools to paint with some different kind of tools to paint with and um, then I found this little natural piece and so we'll have to, we'll have to come back and see what we make with those and then this one I gotta show you. This is was a stem sticking out of the ground. And in the midst of it, it has this hard like seed. I've never seen a, a seed or a nut. If anybody knows what that is, make a comment and tell me. That's uh, pretty interesting. Never seen anything like that. But I thought it would make a good little painting instrument. So we'll try that. And then another leaf, my other leaf got left out. But thank you so much. And I'll see you next time.